All right, this lesson is on solving nonlinear systems of equations, meaning a parabola and a line, or a circle and a line. So let's look at how many ways a parabola and a line could possibly intersect. So there's our coordinate plane. We have, let's see, we'll draw a parabola in red. Say we have this parabola. It's possible for them to intersect in two points. We have a parabola and a line. This isn't a beautiful parabola, but the line could intersect at one point. And it's possible that if you have a parabola and a line, they do not intersect at all. We're also going to look at circles. Uh, the general equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. This is a circle centered at the origin, where r is the radius. Um, we'll talk, probably you'll talk in pre-calc about uh, how to shift it around the graph, and maybe you did that in geometry a little bit. But how many ways can a circle and a line intersect? Let's look at that. So we have a circle and a line can intersect in two points. We have the circle and a line can intersect in one point. Remember that's called tangent. And then it's possible that they do not intersect at all. But the line is down here and they don't intersect. And remember when you're solving a system of equations you're looking for the x and the y value. So you have to plug the numbers back in. You want to get ordered pairs for however many x values you find, and it's possible to get 0, 1, or 2. All right, um, first example is using the substitution method. I have x squared plus 2x minus y equals 5, and 2x plus y equals 7. So I'm going to solve this equation for y, the second one, subtract 2x, and I get that y equals negative 2x plus 7. Then I'm going to substitute this into my original equation, my first equation. You have to use the other equation. And I get x squared plus 2x minus negative 2x plus 7 equals 5. Now I can distribute my negative to both numbers, x squared plus 2x plus 2x minus 7 equals 5. So that's x squared plus 4x minus 7 equals 5. And then I can subtract the 5, and we'll see. Let's see, x squared plus 4x minus 12 equals 0. Now I have a bx term, so algebra is off the table, or square root property. I'm first going to try to factor it. Uh, what two numbers multiply to 12 and add to 4? I think that's going to work for us x, uh, 6, and 2, and that's going to be a positive 6 and a negative 2 to give us a positive 4 and a negative 12, so we get that um, x equals negative 6 and positive 2. Then I have to plug it back in. I'm going to plug it back in to find y into this equation, negative 2x plus 7, because that seems a little bit easier than the original, uh, the first equation. So y equals negative 2 times 6 plus 7, which is negative 12 plus 7. And y is negative 5. So my first ordered pair is negative 6, negative 5. And then I'm going to plug it in negative 2 times 2 plus 7. That's negative 4 plus 7, which is 3. So then my other ordered pair is 2 comma 3. And these are my two solutions for the parabola and the line. Now the next equation, like I said, the x squared plus y squared is a circle. So let's cut this out here. Okay, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, I moved some stuff over so we can do example number two. We're going to take the second equations already solved for y, so we're going to plug it in. I get x squared plus 
y, which is going to be x plus 2 squared equals 20. And remember that when I take x plus 2 squared, I have to multiply out x plus 2 times x plus 2. I get x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4, which is x squared plus x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 20. So I have 2x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 20, combining the like terms of the x squareds. And then I'm going to subtract 20, and I get 2x squared plus 4x minus 16 equals 0. And I'm going to divide this by 2. Let's factor out a 2 to see if I can factor it easier. 2 times x squared plus 2x minus 8. And I believe that factors to x plus 4 and x minus 2 because 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 and 4 plus negative 2 is positive 2. So we get x equals negative 4 and 2. So these work out nicely. If they're not factorable, then you can use completing the square quadratic formula. Then I need to plug it back in. y is x plus 2. So negative 4 plus 2 gives me a y of negative 2. So negative 4, negative 2 is my first ordered pair. And then 2 plus 2, 4. 2 comma positive 4 is my second ordered pair. And that's the substitution method. Okay, it's just like substituting linear equations. It's just now I have quadratics and I have to use that me those methods to solve. Okay, so now we're going to look at the linear combination or elimination method. Remember that the goal with linear combination or elimination or addition method is to add the two equations together so that one of the variables drops out. And if we look at this equation here, this set, we can see that we have a negative 2y and a positive 2y. So that should give us what we need for when we add them together, the two y's will cancel out and then we only have one variable. So 3x squared plus x squared is 4x squared minus 4x equals negative 2. And we'll add our 2. And we get 4x squared minus 4x plus 2 equals 0. And I'm going to factor out a 2. So I get 2x squared minus 2x plus 1. And let's see if we can factor this. Let's see, 2x and x, 1 and 1. That's going to give me 2x and x. Uh, so this one's not factorable. So we're going to erase that. It's not going to work. Now, I can still leave the 2 factored out and make the numbers a little bit smaller for me to deal with when I'm completing the square. So I'm going to divide by the 2 that's in front, then it's gone, I don't have to worry about it, 2x squared minus 2x plus 1 still equals 0, and then to complete the square I need to divide everything by 2, so we get x squared, um, hold on, let me see if I can move this up a little bit. I'm going to get x squared minus x plus one half equals zero. <laughs> now that may not be the type of equation we want to complete the square on because now I get a, a one, which I'm going to have to divide by two and square. So let's then say, man, I don't really feel like doing that. We'll do quadratic formula instead. So you kind of have to go through a process sometimes to decide which method is going to be the best method to use. I have, okay, I'm going to ignore the fact that I divided by 2, and I'm going to use a equals 2, and b equals negative 2, and c equals 1. So negative negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is 1, all divided by 2 times a, which is 2 times 2. So I get positive 2, I'm going to come up here, 
2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 8 over 4, <clears throat> which is 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 over 4, which is 2 plus or minus 2i over 4, which is 1 plus or minus 2i over, oh, I'm sorry, 1i over 2. Let's erase that 2 there, because I'm dividing everything by 2. two. So 1 plus or minus i divided by 2, which means we have two imaginary uh, solutions. And what that means is how can two parabolas cross in imaginary? That means they don't actually cross, so there's no real solution. We don't have to plug in the imaginary numbers into the equation and find the y values for this one. So we get no real solution when if we get an imaginary number when we're solving a system of equations. If we were just solving the quadratic, our answer would be 1 plus or minus i divided by 2. But because it's a system, two systems can't cross in an imaginary place, there's no real solution. So we're going to take the next problem. I'm going to put it on the next slide. Okay, so this one is also solved by elimination method, so I want to make sure I, I have things lined up so it's going to work out. <laughs> I have, um, I'm going to switch it around so y equals 2x squared plus 4x plus 2. And if I were to add them together just the way they are, I would end up with 2y. That's not what I need. I need the y's to be eliminated. So I'm going to multiply this equation by a negative 1. And when we do that, we're going to get negative y, positive x, and negative 2. So now I'm when I add them together, I get the y's to cancel. So make sure one of the y's is negative. So 0, negative y plus y is 0, equals 3x squared plus 4x, and negative 2 plus 2 is plus 0. And I'm going to solve 3x squared plus 4x equals 0. And factor out the x, and I get 3x plus 4. So x equals 0, and x equals negative 4 thirds. And then we have to plug those in. My equation that looks a little bit easier is y equals negative x squared plus 2. So y equals negative 0 squared plus 2. So y is 2. 0 comma 2 is one of my solutions. And y equals negative, negative 4 thirds squared plus 2 which is negative 16 ninths plus 2, and 16, let's see, negative 16 ninths, 2 is 18 ninths, so that is positive 2 ninths. So my other point is negative 4 thirds, comma, positive 2 ninths. And that's another uh, elimination problem. So I have my two solutions. 0, 2, and negative 4 thirds, 2 ninths. Okay, now we're going to look at the graphing method. I'm going to graph my linear equation here, uh, 4x minus 24, and so I need to count by 4s um, just to make this graph big enough. So this is negative 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. So we'll start here at negative 24, and we're going to go up 4, so 4 is one box, and over 1, we can leave the x scale the same, up 4 over 1, and connect that. And so I've graphed my first uh, part of it, and now let's look at our parabola x squared minus 8x plus 12. We talked the other day about like possibly factoring it to make your graphing easier. So that is x uh, minus 6, x minus 2, because negative 6 and negative 2 add to negative 8 and multiply to positive 12. So I can make this a little bit easier by knowing my intercepts are 6 and 2. So this is 2 and 6. And then, so I have 6, 0, and 2, comma 0, 
<laughs> and halfway will be my vertex. 6 plus 2 divided by 2 is 8 divided by 2, so the vertex is at 4. And I'm going to plug that in. 4 minus 6 times 4 minus 2, which is negative 2, times positive 2, which is negative 4. So my vertex is at negative 4. I'm sorry, positive 4, negative 4. So there's positive 2, 3, 4, negative 4 is here. And this one looks a little funky. I also know that I have the point 0, 12, so I'm going to add that to kind of help me 4, 8, 12 to draw this in the right scale. So we can see where our point of intersection is right here. And so the solution, here's an example where it crosses in one spot, is 6, 0. That's our point of intersection and our solution.